Last week, Johnny destroyed a classroom, injuring a student and was expelled. He arrives tomorrow and you need to be ready for some very severe problem behaviors. So we're a week into this assessment now and things have been inconclusive. The worst part is that he just aggressed towards staff and I'm pretty sure they're already getting burnt out. And he kicked out a window this week, which resulted in some pretty serious crisis management. Why can't we get this on track? Like that case last year where we ran that super clean latency-based functional analysis, or even last week when we ran that practical functional assessment and in a matter of few hours, we were making progress. Don't get me wrong, I like a challenge, but sometimes I just wish I had a better framework or process for clinical decision-making so we could be more successful for cases like that. I feel like they trick you into this field with it's as easy as ABC and then bam, it hits you. It's way more than that. It's the context, it's funding, time, staff turnover, inexperienced staff, medications, history of reinforcement, supports, stakeholders, parents, administrators. I could just keep going on and on. And that doesn't even touch on the litany of issues like how everyone has different forms or processes is based on the clinic you're in how many times have we heard find the function when you run a textbook fba and the results are inconclusive or when you can't find a procedure that fits your exact setting or how participants in an article are basically different in every way imaginable sometimes there's just a straight up gap in the research altogether look if you're struggling with these same things you are not alone we've all been there as behavior analysts that's where explanatory fiction comes in Hi, I'm Ryan. Join me each episode as we explore the clinical decision-making process that no one really tells you about. Each week, we're going to have a random set of variables generated that require you to apply your analytical skills and put them to the test. Our general structure is going to work like this. We generate this case with the help of artificial intelligence and then apply a narrative structure to it with our team of writers. In each episode, we begin with the exploration phase where one person from our team steps into this hypothetical world to conceptualize the case. As our clinician experiences the narrative, they will begin to apply our clinical decision-making model to the case. As an episode progresses, this is where you too can analyze the case on a theoretical and conceptual level and formulate how you would help those in need. We progress through this narrative until we reach a resolution, which then kicks off the discussion that you're probably very familiar with. It's a very typical format. Now, if there are any discrepancies between what you would do and our analysts, not to worry actually, because you have the ability to voice them by using the voice messages option where you can record how you would go about doing things differently. We'll occasionally take these submissions and select the best ones as a companion episode and put that out. Oh, and the best part, you can earn continuing education credits for this process too. We'll let you know how to do that with each episode, or you can learn more about that at our community platform, explanatoryfiction.com. But I'll have more on that shortly because I keep saying we. So please meet the team. Hi, I'm Dr. Dimitri McCreese. I've been in the field of behavior analysis for over 14 years, beginning as a direct care behavior tech, then BCBA, clinic director, and now independent practitioner. My specialty is functional analysis, game theory, and behavioral decision making. My role in the game is to represent the player, coming into each case without any knowledge beyond the initial setup with the expressed intent of demonstrating an effective clinical decision making process and approach that builds practical skills, enhances the quality of individual clinical judgment, elevates the discourse, and promotes a community of free inquiry and open exchange for anyone looking to be the best helping professional that they can be. Hey, I'm Danielle Watson. I'm a behavior analytic. PhD student working on wrapping up my dissertation right now. I've been working in the field of behavior analysis since 2008 and board certified since 2018. I live, work, and play around British Columbia, Canada. Hello, I'm Max Bannon. I've been a behavior analyst for a little over two years and in the field since 2014. I'm currently a clinical director in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, I'm David Wegner. I've been working in applied behavior analysis for the past 10 years, the past two of which I've been a BCBA. I currently work as a behavior consultant on a team collaborating with local school districts in and around Columbus, Ohio. Hi, I'm Abby Lewis, and I've been in behavior analysis for the last eight years, certified for four. I live in Kansas City and work as a gen ed teacher. I love that behavior analysis lets me understand the world around me. And that brings me back. I'm Ryan. As a behavior analyst, but also the narrator, editor, and producer, I'm also a behavioral junkie with over 14 years of experience in the field and with some experience in online media and dissemination as well. Now, occasionally we'll have other guests on from time to time to have their interpretation. So when they come on, we'll introduce you to them as well. Now, back Back to the continued education credits before we get out of here. They're available for behavior analysts. Each week, listening into the podcast, you will be covering topics that are well beyond the BACB task list that allows you not only to be entertained, but gather additional knowledge about the field every single episode. Listen, learn, and earn with explanatory fiction. Tell your colleagues, tell your nerdy ABA friends, and subscribe now to never miss a new episode. 
The views expressed during the Explanatory Fiction podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. Assumptions made in the analysis are not reflective of any position of any other entity other than the authors, and since we are critically thinking human beings, these views are always subject to revision, change, and rethinking at any time. Please do not hold us to them in perpetuity. This podcast is to educate and inform, provide discussion, and does not constitute professional advice. Remember again that the variables in this case were randomly generated as well as the name and the episode imagery. Thank you math, thank you science, and thank you artificial intelligence. Rhino LLC is an approved continuing education provider that is ace number hashtag OP-19-3037 and the Behavior Analyst Certification Board, also known as the BACB, a registered trademark, does not sponsor or approve or endorse Rhino LLC, the materials, information, or sessions identified herein. Thank you for listening.